Good afternoon to you. It is Thursday, the 17th of September. We are having an amazing amount of fun talking to you about your pensions. It is Pensions Awareness Live. Let's hear it from the people behind the cameras. <laughs> loving this, absolutely loving it this week. Um, so my name's James and uh, I'm gonna um, uh, host the next 45 minutes or so with you. I'm really excited to be um, bringing another great um, broadcast for you. Now this one is um, all about um, uh, kids taking on the pensions minister, Guy Opperman. So I'm uh, really, really excited that uh, Elmhurst School in Forest Gate uh, in Newham, um, uh, East London, uh, volunteered to ask some questions of um, uh, the UK's uh, pension minister, Guy Opperman. Uh, and, and I'm going to just say a, a tiny bit, top marks to Guy Opperman for doing this. Um, I, I've seen quite a few pensions ministers in my two decades in this industry, and I think he's really, really positively engaged in making pensions better for all of us. So really, really excited about that. Just going to give you an idea of how, how this is going to work and also your engagement in uh, this broadcast now. So um, day four of Pensions Awareness Live, we're super excited. Um, we're going to show you a pre-recorded piece of video, which uh, you're going to love. Then after that, I'm going to introduce you to um, a couple of people for a debate around that. So you're going to meet some, um, Sam Gould from Now Pensions, and you're going to meet Bukola, and she's a year 11 student from Robert Clack, and I'll properly introduce them after the video. But I'd like your engagement, as ever, in what we're doing. Um, we would love you to make comments throughout. We'd love you to ask questions throughout. And we will try and um, incorporate all of that um, post video in a bit of a debate amongst us all so that you get some you know, real positive value out of engaging with it. Uh, also, I've got a separate challenge for you. Think about questions that you think your kids might want to ask about money and or pensions. And we'll try and get them to Guy Opperman and try and get his department to answer. Um, so there's a, a little extra challenge for you. So um, I'm going to look towards cameraman Rick right now and say, whenever you're ready, Rick, I've, I've been waiting to say this all week, roll the cameras. Hi, my name is Guy Opperman. I'm the Minister for Pensions. I'm here at Elmhurst Primary School. Can I come I've over there some year sixers who are going to be asking me questions. A great opportunity to be a part of a Pension Awareness Live and really make the case uh, that everybody should know and have an awareness of their pension on a long-term basis. I am with the amazing Siana Abdul Tasnuba and Shifa who are going to chat to me, grill me with some questions and are going to uh, give me some uh, opportunity to try and explain what it is we do in Parliament. Have you met the Queen? I have met the Queen. I have been to Buckingham Palace. Uh, I have met the Queen and been around the palace. The Queen is this amazing person. She's quite small. She has beautiful skin and uh, she's incredibly polite. What was your dream job when you were a child? I wanted to be a professional steeplechase jockey and uh, that remains my dream job, but I am too old, too fat, and not good enough. Oh, don't say that first. What do you want to be when you grow up? I love to sing. I really love to be a singer when I get older. Okay, so I'm going to be seeing you on X Factor in 12 years' time. Maybe. Who knows? Okay. How about you, mate? I want to be a footballer. I would like to be a part-time professional debater because I absolutely love debating. Okay. And I, but I'd also want to be a doctor, as well as a prime minister, if I get the chance. Okay, so there's, there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't do all those three things. Wait, really? Absolutely. So my advice to you would be, go and get a career, do something, doesn't matter what, and become a doctor. A Lord knows I need doctors. I spend a lot of time in hospital. I've broken, I think I've broken 19 or 20 bones. Uh, and there's time enough to be a member of parliament. So what do you do as a pensions minister? My job, put really simply, is to get this country match fit for the future. All right? And to ensure that as many people as possible have short and long-term savings. What is pension? Easy answer. It's long-term savings. There are short-term savings, you know, savings for uh, buying your mum a birthday present, buying uh, something that you really want. Uh, and then there's long-term savings for when you retire. That's, there's no difference in reality. Were you always good with money when you were a child? No. 
Most definitely not. Um, I did lots of Saturday jobs to try and help and try and save money, but I spent far too much of that and I didn't set aside enough. Do you both have savings? Yes. Okay. I How do you keep them? In a jam jar account? Or? I have this book thing that opens up as a box. Oh, really fantastic. So you've got a little savings box. Uh, so what is a gender pe pension gap? Okay, so there is the difference between men and women, and we've come huge strides forward, uh, but we're trying to ensure that there is no difference in terms of the retirement savings that you have as compared to men. How is it like working with Boris Johnson because he's such a big figure to, in the whole of the United Kingdom and he has a lot of power? He uh, is a very uh, bouncy, charismatic, interesting man and um, is clearly very, very capable at many things. And uh, it's, it's an interesting uh, uh, opportunity to serve in his government, put it that way. Mm. Would you like to be the next Prime Minister or do you want to remain the Minister of Pensions? You've got to like what you do uh, because you never know how long it'll last and I really like this job. We're making 30 to 40 year decisions that will be affecting you and your kids and your grandkids. And also, uh, if you are Prime Minister, it is an enormously difficult job. And there's one golden rule with Prime Ministers, they age really fast. They go grey really quickly, and the lines, you know, they get a lot of those very quickly. That's one job marked off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to a person who would want to become a future Prime Minister or MP? Get to understand yourself. Um, and I always say it to everybody, if you want to change the world, look in a mirror. Start with yourself, all right? And uh, start with how you live your life, how you live your life with your family, your friends, your colleagues, and uh, work out why it is you want to be a member of parliament. What other has your parliament like? So, it is amazing, huge, miles of corridor. I'll tell you a quick story. When I first arrived there, I had to go to uh, the House of Lords, and you go down miles and miles of corridors, and I thought I was going to a meeting, and I opened a door and at that moment my phone went so I went to pick up my phone and I kept walking and then the door shut behind me and too late I realized I was in a cupboard I then fell over lost my phone the light went out because the door closed behind me and I had to be rescued by a police officer who went don't worry sir this happens all the time I have one more question yeah go on, can man. you allow children to be members of parliament yes there is a thing called the youth parliament genuinely is so there's a thing called the Youth Parliament. You come and you debate in November during half term. Um, we have the Youth Parliament and you can represent your local community. I have met many of my um, Youth Parliament. You're elected as well uh, from your local community. Many schools run uh, Youth Parliament elections. Uh, and you guys are probably year six is a little young for it. But uh, I can assure you, yes, you can. And you really should do it. It is an amazing opportunity. So the, the one thing I want you to take away from this is, if you want to change the world, what do you do? Look in the mirror. Yes. Look in the mirror. Thank you very much. Are we back? We're back. Right, OK. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Um, it's a bit of a technical challenge, uh, making sure that we go from live in the studio here and then out to the, uh, the live video feed of a pre-record. Uh, but that was fantastic. So um, I am delighted to be joined um, in this broadcast right now by um, uh, Sam Gould. Uh, Sam is from Now Pensions. Now Pensions are a pension provider across the UK um, and uh, in the auto enrolment space have been an amazing help towards the UK getting on board and having pensions uh, more than we've ever done so in the past. Um, uh, now pensions are also thought leaders on equality in pensions and I, I would just add major supporters of uh, this Pensions Awareness Live event. So this event that's been going on all week probably wouldn't have happened without uh, Now's financial, physical and also emotional support. So, so love that. Um, we're also joined by Bukola and uh, Bukola is a student from DebateMate. Now, DebateMate um, uh, aims to help uh, improve social mobility by bringing after-school debating programme to um, kids across the UK. 
and uh, Bukola is a year 11 student at uh, the Robert Clack School uh, in Dagenham. So uh, hello to you both uh, and first of all um, what I'll do in each case is I'll fire a question so that we don't trip over each other and then I'll say who that's aimed at. So firstly to you Sam, uh, the video with the pension minister was great, really love what you've done there, thanks so much for pulling that together. Why did you decide to visit Elmhurst School Sam? Good question. Um, we wanted to do something a little different today on our takeover day. Um, so obviously the whole day is when we look in the data um, in terms of how we've come to this point where we have this huge gap, I think a large part of that is down to kind of the financial literacy of young people and you know it really starts from a young age and a big theme for us um, going into next year will be working alongside our friends at Debate Mate to try and you know teach younger children about you know the necessity to you know do more savings and get more involved in pensions to kind of future proof their retirement. Uh, which is amazing and uh, why not start with a group um, of um, absolutely uh, tiny ones uh, having a go at the pensions minister. Love that you did that. Um, so your research, Sam, um, uh, at now, and it's been amazing the research you've been doing for the last 18 months or so, reveals that women are retiring with roughly a third of the size of a pension pot to a typical man's pensions pot. Um, why is there such a big uh, gap between men and women's pensions and finances? Sam, what do you think? So I think the gender pensions gap is down to two main things. So we've got the gender pay gap, which is where men are paid more than women. Um, but another large part of it is the fact that women take career breaks during their working life to care for children. So take time out to have children or at later life to care for elderly relatives. And it's that broken working patterns that are the main cause of the gender pensions gap because obviously you're not contributing to your workplace pension or even your private pension and that causes this huge gap between men who may work a 40 year career and have no breaks and obviously women have might have lots of different breaks. Good answer, thank you Sam. Um, uh, and Bicola, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you join us. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. So how much have you engaged with or spoken about finances or pensions up until now? Because you're uh, 15, is that right? Yeah. So, so how much have you talked about that? Um, before Debate Mate spoke about pensions, um, it's a little bit embarrassing, but I never really knew what pensions was and I never really spoke about it with, to anyone. Um, of course, I, I knew the definition of it but I never knew the impact they actually have in our lives and how important they are and the inequality that actually exists within the pension system so I was when I found out about pensions through debate May, I was really surprised um, to find that it's so important and I didn't know about it at all um, but after I realized I spoke to my friends about it and I spoke to my parents and I was able to learn about the importance of pensions so yeah. Had there been much chat um, with friends and family or even in school about uh, money, finance and pensions? Pardon? Can For you, you Bicola, the question? Um, had there been much chat uh, at school with, friend, with friends and or family about money and pensions ever? Was that going on around you? No. Um, we have been told about saving and we, like we should be saving money, um, but we were never really told about pensions or uh, through friends or family or even school. Okay, so so that's a neat um, segue there because Sam, I was going to ask you, uh, do you think we should be teaching um, uh, pupils at school about savings and pensions, and at what age should we start? Uh, Quick answer is yes. Um, I am a self-confessed pension geek, as you guys all know. Um, so I have a three-year-old daughter and I have already got her completely obsessed with piggy banks and any small money that she gets. Uh, it's kind of a race to get home and she, then she has great joy in putting it in her piggy bank and then 
when we want to go buy things then we empty it out so we kind of turn it into like a game i think that there absolutely needs to be more done in schools around financial education uh, i know there's been a study that says um financial habits are set by the age of age nine um which is why back to your earlier point james we went and interviewed these kids at Elmhurst last week because they were age 10. So it was really interesting to talk to them about pensions or saving and every single one of them had a piggy bank um, and they were just starting to get into the concept of, you know, saving up for something that they might really want. So, you know, a PlayStation game or whatever it is that they wanted. Um, but I do think as well that a lot of the parental or household role has to be on you know, the habits of saving and pensions. I think children quite often follow their parents' lead. Um, so I think if you kind of instill that habit in the household, um, that also helps as well. So is the, um, the piggy bank in your house uh, like this one? So the, you, I know you can't see this, Sam, but I'm holding up uh, the green um, nose now detachable pension. now piggy banks that you hand out to ex accentuate this point. Is that what your kid uh, has got? Uh, I have lots of those, James. Um, <laughs> they are everywhere in my house and everyone at Now Pensions has one as well, uh, as well as our friends at Debate Mate. Um, but yeah, we have lots of them and yeah, there's different money in each one and occasionally she'll like to get them all together and then we open them all up and we count them all out and then she like evenly distributes it in each one again. So it turns it into a bit of a game. Oh, I love that. Um, so, Bacola, can I ask you a question? Um, uh, when um, you saw that video, what was your reaction um, when you realised that, that there was this thing called the gender pensions gap? Um, to the short answer is I was really, really surprised. And I was I kept on rewinding the video back over and over again. I watched the video like over three times. I was so surprised that this like still exists, these sorts of things still happen, and I didn't even know about it. Um, like living in the country that we live in, you would want to believe that these sorts of things don't exist anymore and we are equal in, women and men are equal in all sense of the word, but that's just isn't how it is. And it was so, it was a realization that I didn't actually know as much as I thought I would about pensions and the gender pension gap. And um, I was almost, I was taken aback because it was something that's so important to my future, but I had no knowledge of it. So uh, I was quite shocked, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that, thank you so much, that's a, that's a great answer. Um, I, I think I might be going across to Q&A soon, so I'm just gonna give Rach and Johnny a heads up that if there are other questions out there that people have been throwing in to make this debate richer and wider, I'd love to include some. Okay. No questions. Very good feedback, that's it. Everyone loves. Okay, so we're getting we're getting some fantastic feedback, but we're not getting many questions. Well, people can still, still ask, there's still time, send them in now. There is still time for more questions. Uh, but I, I was going to ask another question, Pecola, because I'm fascinated by this. I saw your uh, debate mate um, uh, organisation last year when NOW did a conference near the Houses of Parliament, and there was this amazing session where um, uh, some of your peers were on the stage and pretty much running an audience and it was really brave of them because they were on a stage in an audience full of uh, I don't know adults averaging age probably 40 age 40 years old and plus completely ran the room tell me tell me how debate mate works for you and how much uh, you've enjoyed it um, I have been debating for the last four years and I started in year seven however I do like to say I've debated my whole life because I always love to debate with my sisters but when I started debate, um, it was scary. I used to be very scared to talk in front of crowds, but the mentors and the program helped me develop a confidence in speaking and allowed me to portray a point and my opinion in a sophisticated and respectful manner. And it provided me with so many opportunities and gave me so much confidence and belief that I can do I can change the world I can do things that I want to do through my power of speech so it really empowered me to say the least and, and debate mate has really like changed my life and oh, that's so great to hear and and Sam how did you go about selecting Bukola to be um, uh, on this little chat now uh, so Bukola 
uh, took part in a video with us, which I believe is on your Pension Awareness Day site. And we went to our friends at Debate Mate and we created a video which was about the gender pensions gap. So just some stats around the, you know, women retire with a third of pension pot, a third the size of men. So a hundred thousand pound difference. And uh, we explained about, you know, what is a pension and the state pension and contributions and how it all works with your workplace pension. And then we asked debate mate to share the video amongst all of their alumni and ask some of the students to film their reaction to watching the video. And Bukola, as you'll see, who's in our video, um, she was very animated, very fiery, very passionate, and we loved her. And so we said, we'll have her in this session today. Um, just to, I think it's important that we, you know, hear from the next generation, you know, Bukola is still at school, but when she starts working, I think it's important that she understands about, you know, gender pay gap and ultimately gender pensions gap. And, you know, the younger that these girls can learn about this stuff, then if they're more aware of the issues in later life, then they've got a chance now before they even start working to kind of make sure that it doesn't exist. Um, and Sam, uh, while, while I've got you, what tips uh, would you give to Bukola as she sets off into the workplace? as a woman in the workplace and in, in particular in relation to her own pension journey? Uh, so I would say auto enrolment doesn't start until age 22, but you are able to ask your employer earlier than that if you can opt in. Um, and then it's at their discretion whether they contribute as well. I think, you know, early saving habits. So you know, just put some money aside for a rainy day, just kind of getting into that habit. Um, yeah, kind of enjoy your life, but make sure that you've always kind of got a buffer kind of in terms of savings just to back you up. And in terms of your career, um, you know, forget the glass ceiling, just kind of go for it. And, you know, just always make sure that you are when you are working that you match your employer's contributions in terms of percentage and the earlier you start saving the better. Yeah, I could, I'm just going to echo that Sam. Um, uh, when you go into the workplace sometimes your employer may have a pension contribution strategy that, that rewards you the more you put in and so my tip to everyone is always put in the minimum you need to do in order to get the maximum from your employer going towards your savings pot. Um, so, Bicola, um, uh, you've been selected uh, because of your um, passion and energy, which I love, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, a, a, a career in the pensions industry, maybe? <laughs> maybe, I, I'm not sure. What, <laughs> not what, yet. What, 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 what direction do you think your career might take you? Um, I'm very interested in psychology, and I really do love speaking, so... I'm still unsure about my career path, but I definitely do want to pursue something in this, um, in public speaking and just influencing people in general. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so uh, uh, forgive me, just MP Kolu. Jo Johnny was just shouting to me from the side. Oh, sorry. Um, we've got some questions. Ah, we've got a couple of questions come in. So I'm going to try and moderate those questions. Uh, and I'll also, I might share them or even answer them myself. So, um, Johnny. Rachel's got, mic, I was going to hear the question. Rachel's got the question. So, Rachel, give me a question. Hi, everybody. Um, the first question is from Rachel. As a young person, when is the best time to start saving into a pension? So, as a young person, oh, you're mic'd up, aren't you? So everyone can hear you, right? Okay. Yes. Um, so, um, I think Sam gave a brilliant answer just now. Um, start as soon as you can. In fact, Sam's already created a regime in her household where saving, um, whether it be for pension or otherwise, is already going on. Right. So that's great. Um, my, my view is in our life journey, we should be saving short, medium and long term. Short term is just for emergencies, you know, a couple of new tyres, a new fence panel, a leaking roof, stuff that you don't want to slap on a credit card. Uh, medium term is for the stuff that you know is coming uh, and aspirationally it's within touch, but you need to save for it. So it could be a deposit for a house, it could be buying the car that you always wanted, a, a big um, trip abroad once we're allowed to do that again, or um, a big event like uh, getting married. 
Um, and you, you would typically save into things like uh, an ISA or premium bonds or national savings or so on. Um, but for those of us saving long term, we definitely need to be saving into a pension scheme. Um, so uh, the question to the question, who, who asked the question? Rachel. Rachel, uh, start as soon as you can, uh, but start thinking about what you're saving for and have some kind of a plan. And if you're saving short term, it might not be into a pension, but, but if you're in the workplace, as Sam said, get into your pension scheme as soon as you can. Don't wait till you're 22. Maximise the contributions from your employer. Load up the truck early. Okay. Great. And another question from Rachel. Do you have any tips as to how best to talk to children about money? Do I have any tips? I've got a bit of echo in my ear. How many t do I have any tips about? How to talk to children, how to educate children about money. Ah, so how do we, how do we educate children about money? I think you have to use really, really simple language. Uh, and, but I'm going to ask Sam to ask, answer that because, uh, Sam, you're, you're already uh, educating uh, your daughter. Um, so uh, tell us, what sort of language are you using to get it across? Um, I think, you know, gamifying it, making it fun. So, you know, it's my daughter's only three. So it's a case of getting out the pennies and they're all different sizes in terms of the coins. And then she matches them into little piles. And I think there's a lot of saving apps for kids. And I think the more gamified that they make it, the more engagement they get with kids who are so used to staring at screens and, you know, on iPads and stuff. So make it fun. Um, kind of set a challenge with them, like with my daughter we do matching, so we put all the coins in the right piles. Um, yeah, fun. Fun. And um, Bacola, how about you? Um, you know, what sort of language, as a, as a 15 year old student, what sort of language do you need finances and pensions to be in? Um, I need, I would prefer to be in languages I understand. Um, after I found out about pensions, I was reading, I was doing a lot of research and trying to find out like, what is this pensions? And I was able to find a lot out, but some of it I didn't really understand. Um, but things that are easy for me to understand and um, relevant to my future. Yeah, okay, uh, right, thank you so much. Rachel, any others? Yeah, a couple of questions for Bacola. Are you taught about personal finance, savings or budgeting at school? And if so, do you, do you ever discuss it with your friends? Are there any yeah. tools, apps or websites you use to help you budget or save? There you go, Bacola. I don't, did you hear that? Yes, I did. Um, me, all my friends, we all have saving accounts. And after we, after I found out about pensions, I spoke to my friends and my friend has a savings account that she has access to, but I have a savings account, but I don't have access to it right now. Um, so it varies from person to person. And I just, I save with my debit card. I use my uh, Halifax because yeah. Um, but I don't really use any apps to save. Otherwise I just, when I get my allowance, I budget it in terms of how much I can spend this month and how much I'm saving for next month. So I always have a certain amount of money that I'm putting away. And does that require a bit of discipline? Do you always stick to your budget? <laughs> no, not all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I go over and, but I feel like once I go over, I recognize that I've gone over my budget and I have to either subsidize the next month or find find a way around it um it's it does require a lot of discipline and it's not easy um especially around christmas time when you want to buy everything yeah. it's not easy to keep within your budget but it is doable oh thanks bacola thanks for sharing that. that's a great answer um any any other questions Rach? yeah another one for bacola with all you know about pensions inequality do you plan to contribute to your pension once you're eligible yes um the minute I hit the age of 22, or even before that, I'm going to be asking my employer about my pension and trying to make sure that I'm in the best position uh, when I retire to live a fruitful life and, and make sure that I am able to be fully provided for with the money that I have been putting away. Great. Who asked that quest question, Rachel? That was from Joe. Joe, Joe, thanks for that question. Have you got any others for us, Rachel? Yeah, I've got another one from Naomi. Um, this might be for you, James. Our children have good savings pots. They already see the amount of money in their accounts as a lot. 
which is right now, but how do you teach children about the value of money changing so that they continue to save independently when they are able to? Oh, I've got a tiny bit of echo in my ear, and I, missed, I might have missed a, 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 a quite an important part of that. So the kids have already got some savings. So how do you teach children about the value of money? Um, do you mean the value of it against inflation, or, or just having yes. it? Yes, yeah. Um, okay, so re it, it, I think um, Sam and Bacola have already given great answers to this already. I think you need to be open, you need to be honest, and you need to be realistic about what you know amount of saving is going to get you to the thing that you're aiming for. Uh, and if at all possible, we need to remind people about the, the value of compound growth. So if you are saving for something, the sooner you save for it and the longer you do it, the bigger your um, pot of savings will get. Um, we need to make sure people are aware of their options. So uh, saving in something that's got immediate access, or as Bukola said, she's saving into something that maybe she doesn't have immediate access to, but that's not a bad thing, because that adds some discipline. Um, so just, just being open and honest about it all, I think, is, is the best way. Uh, but maybe also teaching people about the value of money today and, and how that could be eroded if you don't keep saving because inflation, the cost of living, keeps going up. Uh, so who asked that question, Rach? That was from Naomi. Naomi. Naomi, if, I, if I've barked up the wrong tree there, could you just give us a quick kick in the shins in, with another uh, comment and I'll see if I can answer it slightly better if I haven't done uh, any other questions? That's it for now, but send them in if you've That's got any it. more. That's it for questions for now. Um, so I thought this would be about a 30 to 45 minute session. We've been going for 30 minutes and it's just flown by. Um, Sam, any other final comments from you? Um, because I'm so grateful that both you and Bacola have given up some time. Have you got any mes final messages to anyone about um, getting their savings right, especially if they're at the early part of their, um, uh, of their life? Uh, yeah, really quickly. Um, so in terms of parents at home, um, you know, talk to kids about money, um, try and do like a household savings and you could do like a leaderboard on your fridge and see who's saving the most. And, you know, in terms of getting kids to do chores around the house and pocket money, I think that's a really easy way to get young kids to think about money. Um, and in terms of general questions that any other children or young people might want to know um, as James said send them all into Pension Awareness Day and we will do our best to get them in front of the minister again um, but yeah great that he took part in the video with us we had a lot of fun last week in the school and it's great that loads of kids seem really interested in learning more about money and saving. Thanks so much for that, Sam, and thanks for the energy that, that uh, now pensions have brought to this. So, Bacola, you said that um, uh, you and your mates are already saving. Imagine yeah. you were in, uh, surrounded um, uh, in a classroom by some pals that, that maybe haven't saved. What message would you give them? I would tell them that it's really important to start saving as early as you can um, and try and explain that the cost of living is going up every single day and... It, when you start saving earlier, it's easier for you to smoothly enter adulthood. So I would start saving as quickly as you can and ask your parents about a savings plan that they can help you with or just independently start uh, saving away chunks of your allowance to make sure like at the end of the year, meet your goal of a certain amount of savings. So like set achievable goals for your savings and try your best to meet them. That's a fabulous answer. And uh, Bacola, can I just ask one more question about you? Is that all right? Uh, are yeah. you, you're year 11, aren't you? Yes. So that's GCSEs this year. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I just wish you the very, very best of luck with those, Bacola. And thank, thank you. you so, so much for giving up some of your morning to join in this debate. It's been really, really excellent to meet you. So good luck. Thank you to you. Thank you to Sam. Thank you to now. And just a quick message back to everybody else. Thanks for your um, attention and for love and energy and the questions you've been asking. Thank you for signing up in your dozens and dozens already this week. Don't forget that this is a takeover day. So now have um, uh, provided five sessions for us today that I think are really amazing. Uh, join us again at 2.30 uh, where Ellie is going to be talking about flexible working uh, and Ellie and I are going to open up the debate for us all to engage on that really important subject. So thank you all so much. Take care and we'll speak again very, very soon. Let's hear it from behind the camera once more.
Thank you so much. Take care, everybody. Stay well.